22 new ministers, four of them of cabinet rank. Uh, and among those, of course, will be Manohar Parikar, who is expected to be the new Defence Minister of India, taking over that portfolio from Arun Jaitley, who has held dual charge along with the finance portfolio. There are also going to be uh, as many as 15 new ministers of state. Among them are people like Rajavardhan Rathor. You have people like Ram Kirpal Yadav from Bihar. Rajiv Pratap Rudi is expected to get a significant portfolio. Bihar seeing a very strong representation today. As many as three ministers expected to be sworn in from Bihar since elections are due there next year. You also have uh, others like uh, Mukhtar Abbas Nakvi, Vice President of the BJP, who may see a return to the Council of Ministers after nearly 15 years. Jen and Sinha uh, is expected to be Minister of State for Finance. Uh, he's Mr. Yashwan Sinha's son and is from Jharkhand. So he would be an important entrant. These are pictures from the Prime Minister's residence just a short while ago uh, where uh, the those who are being inducted today were invited uh, for a chai session, uh, a, a breakfast tea as it were. Uh, after getting a phone call from the Prime Minister, they will then be headed uh, to Rashtrapati Bhavan where the swearing in actually takes place at 1.30 this afternoon. The big question though at this moment is what is happening with the Sena and the BJP. There have already been many U-turns in this story over the last few weeks and many over the last few hours as well. Early this morning, we heard that there was a breakdown of talks between the Sena and the BJP. Now we are hearing there is possibility of a breakthrough. The Shiv Sena's Anil Desai, who is a Rajya Sabha MP, is on his way to Delhi and is expected to be part of this cabinet expansion today. I'm going to say expected because you just never know how this story with the Sena could change even over the next two hours or so. At the moment, Mr. Desai is on his way. That indicates then that there could have been a breakthrough. A lot of this depended on, on the talks that were going on between the two sides as far as the Maharashtra government is concerned. So has, what is the breakthrough that has taken place there, if it inde indeed it has? We also saw Suresh Prabhu, a member of the Shiv Sena, uh, with, uh, uh, at the Prime Minister's residence. In fact, he's just left. Uh, he was part of that tea uh, uh, this morning and uh, it is uh, now fairly certain that he is going to be part of the Union Council of Ministers. Mr. Prabhu uh, is the Prime Minister Sherpa for the G20 uh, summit uh, in Australia. So uh, there has been speculation he could be taking over a body that would replace the uh, uh, planning commission uh, with a cabinet rank. He could also possibly get uh, another important portfolio, but uh, that mystery will only be cleared up in a couple of hours from now. Rahul Srivastav, Ketki Angre and Saurabh Gupta all joining us now on that developing story and I'm going to begin first with Maharashtra. Ketki, to you first, you were the one who told us that Anil Desai was yes indeed on his way to Delhi. Now, can we say with a certain degree of certainty that he's coming because he's taking oath or is there still uh, a question mark over that? Well, the plan is certainly that he comes here to be part of the cabinet expansion and goes to Rashtrapati Bhavan for the oath-taking ceremony. So officially, the Shiv Sena will have at least two members in the Council of Ministers. Now, um, officially, though Suresh Prabhu is a Sena leader, within the Sena, they are not really keen to have his name as a part of Sena's quota. This is also because they feel the decision of who from the Shiv Sena should take oath should be that of Uddhav Thakre and no one else. So in that sense, the Shiv Sena is really upset that uh, Suresh Prabhu might be included in, in the quota of the Shiv Sena and they might lose uh, one more name or one more person to their quota. But having said that, yes, at the moment, Anil Desai is on his way to be part of that cabinet expansion and he is likely to also take oath at 1.30 along with the other 21 names that we've been talking about as well. Now, what has uh, seemed to have changed in the last few hours is a call between Uddhav Thakre and Amit Shah, the BJP president. And this call has helped uh, change things because just last evening we were talking about how Anand Gite was actually called back to Mumbai just minutes before he was expected to meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And just after that, things seem to be going downhill for the Shiv Sena and the BJP. Everything really hinges on what the Shiv Sena gets in return in Maharashtra. At the moment, the Shiv Sena's status, as it were, is complicated and unknown. They don't know whether they're going to be part of the ruling BJP government or whether they're going to have to sit in the opposition. The Shiv Sena's contention also was at least induct somebody in the cabinet in Maharashtra so we know which side we are on and only then will we support the BJP-led government for the crucial floor test on the 12th of November. But the BJP is not keen on that. The BJP actually wants to induct and expand the cabinet in Maharashtra only after clearing the floor test. And that's really where things got contentious between the Shiv Sena and the BJP. The Shiv Sena is meeting at 4 o'clock in Mumbai, where it is likely to take a final call on whether it wants to sit in the opposition or not. 
certainly this is now going to be seen as a thaw that Anil Desai is finally coming here to Delhi. And if he does take oath at 1.30, Nidhi, like you said, it's really uh, something we should go with expected to take oath at 1.30, then uh, many will see this as a, a restoring of relations between the Shiv Sena and the BJP. Nidhi? All right, let me just uh, take that uh, uh, across to Saurabh first in Mumbai. So, Saurabh, uh, do we have any idea then what, what has been negotiated in Maharashtra? Because as Ketki was saying, this is all linked. Well, from what we're hearing here from our sources is that while Anil Desai may have gone to Delhi and it is expected that he will be part of that cabinet expansion now, that hasn't changed the situation on the ground here in Maharashtra. The Sena is still insisting on a statement from the BJP that this is what the BJP has to offer to the Sena for it to be a part of the government in Maharashtra. Now, of course, top-level negotiations are on after Anand Gita was called back to yesterday. Like Ketki mentioned just a short while ago, there was a conversation between Amit Shah and Uddhav Thakur. That's what our sources are telling us. And at that uh, call, there were some assurances made but the BJP also maintaining that it will not induct ministers before the trust vote, like it was saying. And also, that doesn't, the important thing is that doesn't change anything as far as Maharashtra is concerned. What the Sena is going to do in Maharashtra is going to be decided in that all-important meeting, which is going to be held at 4 o'clock this afternoon. Right now, there's very little coming out of the Sena here. Uh, all, everyone tight-lipped and, of course, things changing dramatically in a matter of minutes. Um, all this morning, we were being told that Anil Desai would not be going, Anil Desai would not be part of the uh, cabinet expansion. Then, of course, it seems that there was a change of mind. He did take that flight to New Delhi. And, of course, it's very difficult to predict what the Shiv Sena is going to do right now uh, till actually that meeting takes place at 4 right. o'clock where there will be some sort of clarity on what the Sena's position is going to be. All right, I don't envy any of you who have to uh, report on the Shiv Sena and BJP's uh, relationship over the last few weeks with all its ups and downs and U-turns that have been taking place. But Rahul, let me go across to you then uh, at, at, at the Prime Minister's residence this morning. Uh, just give us a sense then of what you're hearing, one on Maharashtra, and then I'll come to the rest of it. What is, the, uh, what is it that you're hearing from the BJP leadership here on the deal with the Sena? Didi, sort of use one term, complicated. The entire BJP Shiv Sena uh, relationship has gone extremely complicated and almost resembles a jigsaw puzzle in which few pieces are missing. Uh, what we are still hearing is that, uh, uh, that there is some effort on for a patch up. This is confirmed. Uh, there were uh, conversations between top leaders last night. That is confirmed. Mr. Suresh Prabhu, a Shiv Sena leader, very close to the Prime Minister, arrived at the seven day school's residence of the Prime Minister. Uh, in the morning before the Chai Par Charcha with a new entrance uh, was being held. And now he, uh, we are being told that he is sitting not inside with the Prime Minister, but he is sitting at a, at a function in a five-star hotel uh, on a, in a, in, as part of a think tank discussion. Uh, this, that is why uh, there are very strong uh, the informations coming that he may take oath, but the very fact that he is not part of the meeting here with the Prime Minister does indicate in the other direction. Uh, there is strong indication that Mr. Anil Desai is rushing towards Delhi and uh, there is another word that he may be taking oath. But what is the dynamics, what is the matrix being created that all this will fit in, not really clear at this moment. One will have to wait and see, uh, get ac more accurate information on the list which has gone to the President House eventually if that does have the names of those who are from the Shiv Sena. If Mr. Suresh Prabhu's name is there uh, as a confirmed entity, taking oath as a cabinet minister, then is he coming in as a Shiv Sena member or is he coming in as somebody with the BJP is propping right now, maybe brought into parliament later within the stipulated six months time is something one will have to really wait and see. Otherwise, till then, uh, we can only attribute uh, news to sources and uh, convey what exactly is happening on the ground. This Mr. Suresh Prabhu arrived at the meeting with the Prime Minister of the new entrance and then is sitting right now, not in the meeting, but in part of a discussion as a think tank.
All right. Like I said, don't envy anybody who has to report the story, given all, all or how it keeps changing virtually every few minutes. Rahul, uh, before we just uh, show our viewers some of uh, uh, who the new probables are, just take us through the overall list now. As you said uh, this morning, 22 ministers in all, which would actually take up the strength to the Union Council of Ministers uh, to 67. So that's almost as big as, as what the UPA's uh, initial Council of Ministers was. Quite a big Council of Ministers. Yes, definitely there is a move forward expanding. Now, if the Prime Minister is bringing, uh, expanding his cabinet, also keeping certain regional and caste aspirations and uh, depicting that, that in his Council of Ministers, say for example, now there will be seven odd ministers uh, from, uh, from Bihar. Mr. Rajiv Pratap Rudi, a minister in the Vajpayee government, has already tweeted uh, on a social side that he is going to take charge as a minister, oath as a minister of state which means there are going to be seven men from Bihar. Now, these men have to be given some kind of a respectful portfolio allocation so that if a political signal has to be sent uh, into Bihar, uh, voters in Bihar, which uh, who are going to exercise their right sometime next year, then they have to be given certain amount of decent portfolio allocation. Uh, UP is going to get a uh, lot of people. We have got a new name, Mr. Uh, uh, Rama Kataria, who is a member from uh, parliament from Western UP, in charge of the BJP as a uh, of Punjab state, recently held a lot of meetings, means uh, uh, Sadhvi Niranjan Jyoti, Mahesh, Dr. Mahesh Sharma from Noida, uh, Muktar Abbas Nakhvi, several men coming in from Uttar Pradesh also, which is going to go to polls in 2017. Uh, Rajasthan seems to be getting a new, uh, uh, lot of people. Perhaps the contours are being changed, keeping in mind the future politics. But interestingly, also, four cabinet ministers means certain ministers who are hanging on to additional portfolios are going to be relieved of their charge means somewhere the Prime Minister is going against the concept of super ministries which are created. As I earl we earlier discussed, it could be perhaps a sign that the earlier arrangement of super ministries with a lot of minis ministries with portfolios with one minister was perhaps an attempt to settle down, uh, have trusted men handling major ministries so that there are no initial blues as far as these crucial ministries come, uh, yeah. are, uh, are uh, concerned and then come down to induct new ministers and give them the charge so that the government finds smooth functioning.